Hey there, it's your friend Sue starting the fourth season of the Unschooling Mom to Mom podcast. Little 10 minute weekly pep talks to keep you inspired and help you see how unschooling can work for you and your family. Lots of misinformation floats around out there. And after nearly 30 years, I've seen what works and what doesn't. So I'm keeping it real for you. No highlight reels here. Life is messy. And that means unschooling and parenting even more so. We're all moving in uncharted territory, right? But I'm here walking alongside you, reminding you that you are not alone out there. Today, we're talking about Pi Day. It seems kind of funny to me that this is the topic for the kickoff podcast for the fourth season. But it's this week, and I have some thoughts about it. In school, teachers create lesson plans around Pi Day. Often it involves food, so the kids are excited to deviate from the lecture format and do something more fun. Traditional homeschooling families do the same thing. You'll find lots of Pi Day lesson plans and teachery things online, and that's what they're using. Unschoolers, on the other hand, may do this a little differently. If you're looking for non-lesson plan focused activities and ideas, I have a blog post where I've collected a lot of resources for you. And if you're like me, I needed a little refresher of what exactly is pi. It has to do with circles. It's a little math formula that is always the same when you're trying to find aspects of a circle, like the area or the perimeter. I have a quick little video that I snagged from YouTube in case you need a little more explanation. Don't worry, it's not complicated. I also have some fun facts about Pi Day in general over there. And if you subscribe to the Strewing Calendar, you'll have even more resources. I'll put a link in the show notes for how to subscribe to that because it's a fun way to celebrate and learn something new every day for only $5 a month. Okay, stay with me because I'm gonna tell you why I'm not a big fan of Pi Day. I mean, I do love my little collection of pie memes. They're funny and they amuse me and they'd be good to use with your bigger kids. You could send them in a text or text them Pi Day jokes. I have a lot for you to choose from. And yes, the kids will roll their eyes at you and it may feel a little geeky, but how about we just play with learning and not take things so seriously? My grown kids, all in their 30s, still remember that we always cooked a pie with the pie symbol carved into the crust in every March. I'm not sure they remember that it was March 14th or why we really did it, but we did. And your kids will remember how you sent them kooky texts to remind them about something called Pi Day. I have a Pinterest board full of all kinds of things you might like to look at too. And I put some of my favorites over at the blog. Things I think you could do if you're so inclined. And you know, it's always an excuse to have pies, maybe regular dessert pies or mini pies. Kids could choose their favorite and make small ones, but also pizza pie and Frito pie and meat pies and oatmeal pies and moon pies and Lots to choose from to celebrate Pi Day. So let me know in the comments if you're doing any of these or think of something else I've forgotten. Tag me if you take a picture. I want to see. Okay, now to the reality check of Pi Day, especially for unschoolers. And the reason I say for unschoolers is that the others, school kids, traditionally homeschooled, maybe relaxed homeschoolers, all those subsets that are not unschoolers, Those kids may enthusiastically embrace your ideas for Pi Day. They're used to lesson plans and worksheets and teacher-driven materials, none of which are chosen by the kids. So Pi Day with food and activities seems fun. And I'm using air quotes around that word fun because I think the misuse of the word has led to many a kid thinking they hate to learn. I think in school and with curriculum users, Teachers tell them, this is going to be fun, and then it's just not. Yes, better than what was planned for the day or what we remember from our own monotonous school days. But did it really reach the level of fun? I think not. So enter the unschooling family where fun is really fun and terminology isn't used to manipulate or sell a kid on something. So don't say Pi Day is coming and I have something really fun planned. Memes, video explanations, activities, food options. They might be enjoyable, even a little interesting, but fun? Let's be careful here. Might be better to look up a variety of things ahead of time yourself. 
see what might appeal to your kids. There's a Dr. Seuss book and a Cute Pies for Breakfast book. I have those linked at the blog post. You could have a pie taste testing at precisely 314 in the afternoon. You could even do a countdown for it. And I have a link at the blog to write something called Haiku, which is like haiku, but easier. It's a three-line poem. First line has three syllables. Second line has one syllable. And third line has four syllables, like it's pie day. Now, eat and learn, y'all. <laughs> the link that I have at the website has a bunch of examples, and it's so easy. Maybe you could just start doing them and see if anyone wants to join you, like that Newton. Bonk, what a story. <laughs> or so easy, yep, I'm a poet. I think when you start to play with words like that, some kids really enjoy it. I'll stop though, you get the gist. Remember too that it's Einstein's birthday, which is a cool coincidence. I even found some birthday hieroglyphics that you could use and see if the kids can guess what it is. Notice I have deliberately not said the word fun. No doubt, some kids will find some of it fun. I found some of it fun. But last year in my coaching group, one of the members, a dad, said, Pi Day was a flop at our house. I told my son I had a ton of cool things to show him what Pi Day meant. And the kid, I think he was 12, was not impressed. <laughs> okay, dad, thanks. Can I go now? <laughs> I'm sharing this with you because that may very well be your experience. And I don't want you to feel like it was a flop or that you didn't pull it off right. And all the families are out there happily gorging on pie and singing happy birthday to Einstein because they're probably not. And most likely not in the unschooling families where kids have been able to see truthfully what is fun and what isn't. Yes, I have a ton of activities to demonstrate how to find the area of a circle, or a quick formula to show that when you multiply pi, 3.14, with the diameter of a circle, it'll give you the circumference. But that's kind of random. Your kids may well look at you like, why do I want to know this? And it's a legitimate question. Maybe you could show them as a magic trick. I just made this up as I was thinking about the podcast. So let me know if you try it or if it works. Ask them to measure the diameter of the circle. Go straight across the pizza, a cookie, the top of a soda can. Have them tell you that number. And you multiply it on your phone by 3.14 and tell them, take this string and go around the outer rim. Now hold that string up to a ruler and I'll bet the number is whatever you calculated. Voila, a use of pi, finding out the circumference. Or go the other way, measuring the circumference and the diameter. And when you divide that outer rim, by the line across the middle, will always be 3.14, plus a lot more numbers, but that's a good round number. This will show them that whether you're measuring a penny or the top of a barrel, this formula works always. And that's why we have formulas. They're constants. You can tell the kids that in high school, kids have to memorize a bunch of formulas for geometry. And this is one of them. It's this number actually called an irrational number because on the right side of the decimal point, the numbers go on and on and on. But we round it off to 3.14. And since March is the third month and today is the 14th, 3.14, we take a minute to celebrate pie. And we call it pie day. Not spelled the same as pie, like chocolate pie or cherry pie, but sounds the same. And we even have this funny little symbol to go with it. Do we have a lot of reasons to use this? Hmm. Well... I can't say I've used it a lot in my real life, and I've been alive for 63 years. But if you need to document that you did a little math for your end-of-the-year progress report, here's a little geometry you can count. I know, I've lost some of you by this point. Or you're hanging on by a thread wondering, where am I going with all of this? I do want you to realize that math really does permeate our lives. But our own school experiences with math often left us with a ton of math anxiety. So we move away from it whenever possible. Even some of you have kind of zoned out while I'm talking about this. But notice that about yourself. That's the first step of not passing on your own math anxiety to your children. I'm not saying pull out the math workbooks so they can learn math, because that's probably how you learned it. That wasn't a great experience. So don't duplicate that. 
But maybe you can make some pies this week. Text some memes on the 14th. Do some magic tricks. Read the book about pies for breakfast or watch that video of someone reading The Cat in the Hat and Pie Day. Let a little math wash over you. I do have a great course that's only $49, Learning Math Without Curriculum. I'll show you where math really does weave in and out of our daily lives. This is the way to see math differently, not through that schoolish lens that we all have. I'll put a link to that in the show notes too. And remember, if your kid doesn't seem to care that much about Pi Day, or when you say goodnight, they don't say, gee, mom, that was the best day learning about pie and all. <laughs> I really doubt that will happen. Most likely it's because it's randomly out of context. They may not retain it at all. That's okay. It's not a failure. It's all just an experiment, dropping seeds, strewing ideas, exposing them to new ideas, and it gives them a little cultural connection point, plus a little math. If you find yourself in a community where everyone is sharing about their kids happily enjoying Pi Day, and that's making you feel pressured or inadequate, come over to my membership group. Surround yourself with parents who aren't going to focus on the same metrics. We may share some photos of pies we made. You won't feel that same comparison. You won't feel you need to make your kids do Pi Day. It's a random option, available to choose or not and still enjoy parts of it yourself. And your kids may notice and join in. It really all depends on how we present it. Like everything, right? Okay, happy Pi Day and happy unschooling. Enjoy your kids. Reach out if you need help.